it's time for another teardown and on the menu today is the Imation Super Disk Drive. So what the heck is this thing? Well, if you never heard of it, I wouldn't hold it against you because I never knew this thing existed until just a couple years ago when somebody gave it to me. Here you can see the model number SDUSB-M2 and pretty much everything I know about this thing already is from Wikipedia. Um, it was made for, um, you could put ordinary floppy disk into it just fine 1.44 megabyte you could even format this to have a 30, 32 megabyte capacity and it had specialized disks that looked like this um, that would have a 120 megabyte capacity here's a look at the back just a, a 5 volt power port and then this other thing kind of looks like a SCSI connector but I think it's actually supposed to be um, just a, a plug for a USB adapter because the model number down here SD-USB-M2 so and even the here is Super Disk USB I think this this particular type was made for Macintosh users as a matter of fact the guy that gave it to me said he was using it for Macintosh many years ago now I have no intention of putting this thing back together once I've got it apart so I have it hooked up to power supply there, variable stepped voltage power supply, and looking at the voltage on my multimeter up here, HP uh, 3476A. There you can hear it just turned on, 6 volt, and it's actually rated for 5 volt, but I found 6 volt works just fine. Got the microphone right on top of it, so we can get some good sound. Let's see how it goes when we put the disc into it. smooth as butter. How about when we eject it? There we go. Works beautifully. So let's crack this thing open. Now probably the biggest reason why I never heard of this thing before and the big reason why it wasn't very popular in the first place is because the iOmega zip drive had just come out a few years before this. So the the zip drive already had a good hold on the market and this thing just couldn't compete and I suppose another reason is because this one in particular made for Apple and I've never been an Apple guy so no surprise that I never even heard of it then plastic case oops guess I should take the there we go nice animation here uh, front cover and then the rest of it just falls apart look at that ooh the whole thing just slides out man this thing really is smooth as butter now look at that the uh, the rest of it just looks like an ordinary floppy drive the same the covering here is reminiscent of many floppy disk drives that I've taken apart just pop it open here Should probably be using a screwdriver for this so I don't ruin my fingernails with them on here there we go excellent it does look very much like an ordinary floppy disk drive and I saw this in the Wikipedia article this little attachment here so there's the the IDE connection that comes standard and then there's this little daughter board here that converts the IDE into whatever this is plus um, external power connection because this thing could not run on USB power alone just for the heck of it let's see if we can make this thing go without the cover on it oh look at that that's awesome yeah just the angle so you can actually see the disc spinning and see that again <laughs> that's awesome that's almost just as fun as watching a VCR suck the tape into the machine and wrap it around the drum head now as for the operation of this thing we've got three 
primary things on top here. There's the little little tiny DC motor with uh, some gears stuff in here for um, the automatic eject mechanism. And then we've got a coil and magnet slider right here for, I suppose, the course adjustment, the course movement. And there's another little one right here going the same direction for... I suppose fine adjustment. Now the Wikipedia article says that this this thing keeps the head parallel to the disc. I don't know what the author is trying to say because it the, the head is always parallel to the disc. It always actually touches the disc surface. Um, but I have, I have a suspicion that this is coarse adjustment, fine adjustment, and as for regulation, the thing that controls the oops. I just pushed the HX button there. The thing that controls the fine adjustment is this contraption down here. Look at that. Invisible laser radiation. Awesome. We got some IR laser stuff going in here. And um, I think this is actually a floptical drive where it uses optical uh, sensing on the disk surface to to determine exactly where the head is to have very fine control over the uh, over the tracks on the disc so there's a laser assembly on the bottom of the the uh, the head read write head slider there's this little black surface mount package down there and a plastic lens on the other side and then um, another cylindrical plastic lens if I can get something to point here right down in there and then a little mirror on a 45 degree angle to point the laser light um, at the disc surface or I'm not really sure I don't know if this this thing back here I don't know if that's the emitter or the detector or both it might be both emitter and detector incorporated into one package because I can't see any separate laser diode anywhere and um, not even up here there's no laser diode attached to the top plate to to transmit through the disc it wouldn't work on this disc anyway this is just a standard 1.44 megabyte floppy disk but the 120 megabyte variety that was designed to go into this thing that might have some special optical qualities that allow it to be used with this thing i turned off most of the lights now let's see if we can see some laser light when this thing is working Uh-oh. I never heard that sound before. I don't know what's going on. There's that little purplish blue dot. That's the IR light. And I don't know why it's making those weird sounds now. It just seems to have crapped out on me. Oh, I think I know why. Because it, it has trouble trying to push the head up against gravity. That's why it was crapping out. Now I'm holding it kind of level in my hand. There we go. It just doesn't like operating when it's upside down or standing upright. Enough of this funny business now. Let's tear the thing apart. First, I want to see if I can get this metal top cover off of it. I'm sure there's a trick to do this non-destructively, but eh, whatever. There we go. So we can see the two heads here. There's the top one. There, so the two little black bars inside the white plastic material there, that's the, that's actually two individual um, read-write um, magnetic coils in there. Uh, one for the standard 1.44 megabyte format and the other for the higher density 120 megabyte format. Same thing on the bottom piece down here too. That darker one that you see right in the middle, that's actually a groove in the material right there. But that one, that's a head and that's a head. Well, the whole thing is a head, but those are two different uh, ferrite coils, I guess, ferrite cores. Here's another little sensor mechanism. Looks like a Hall effect sensor on the 
some kind of magnetic material here. It doesn't seem to be a permanent magnet. It's not attracting the, the steel screwdriver at all. No idea what the heck this thing is, is doing here. Speaking of magnets, let's take the, the big magnets off of here. So that's one nice nice neodymium neodymium, neodymium magnet on a steel frame and should be same thing for this one if I can get it off there we go yep just a little bit bigger this is very reminiscent of some zip drives that I've taken apart a few years ago it's actually better quality construction than zip drive if you were taking apart a zip drive especially uh, one of the external zip drives there's a lot of pieces in there that are just held together with adhesive just uh, tape like adhesive tape holding all the magnet stuff together it's really pathetic how they put it together but hey that might be another reason why this thing is unheard of zip drives may have just been a lot cheaper so people just went for zip drives instead of this thing so right there that's little DC motor thing got some nice gears this might come in handy for some little miniature low-speed high torque application even has a little switch right there for sensing when this thing makes when it reaches a certain point in its revolution so that's one head piece off of there Let's see if we can get this other thing out the whole thing there we go no problem take that rod out of there all right there it is got the two copper coils optics assembly on the bottom Clearly there is no laser at all on the top, so I guess this thing right here, this little surface mount 10-pin package, that's got to be emitter and detector. All going through this little mirror right here, and then put the macro lens on the camera, and you can see right here, there's that little slit in the, the plastic material. There's the two magnetic heads they're the two magnetic coils or what i don't even know what to call them as individual pieces and the mirror right there and you can see through the mirror you can see through the mirror that the laser light will be going right through that slit down there onto the disc surface and then reflected back through the mirror and going going back here into the emitter detector module all right so here's the lens on that module thing just pried it off with the pliers here the camera can focus right there we go and get the right angle on the light and there it is see some funky stuff there on the surface of the the plastic there's the bottom of it And then as for the electronics itself, there we go. I'm sure one of those things in there is a laser diode and the other thing must be a detector. Okay, I'm at maximum magnification here and I think the laser diode itself is somewhere in the middle. Maybe that tiny little block, just a little bit lower of center. And then as for the detector, uh, for sensing the position on the disc that might go to the the three bars on top and the three bars on the bottom of the die those might be little tiny photodiodes too uh, for the actual position sensing not a hundred percent sure but that's my best guess you can also see a little bit more semiconductor circuitry all around in the in the gray area there awesome stuff now as for that little magnetic bar on the side or supposedly magnetic you can see if I put the neo neodymium magnet on there it's it works but it is quite weak not nearly as strong of a attraction as if this was just a 
hard chunk of iron so, and uh, the sensor itself I pulled it off just this little tiny green plastic surface on one side and you can see a couple of the traces going in there but no clue as to what the heck is, is actually in there. I assume this is some kind of very precision magnetic sensor or Hall effect sensor of some sort and this bar here is just a bunch of very fine yet very weak um, magnetic poles going all along and this is just probably a rough encoder so that this thing uh, is able to sense exactly where it is and it's able to get itself back to the home position whenever you put a disc in or pull, pull a disc out it's able to get itself in a good starting position that's probably what this is for and on the circuit board there's the pins where that thing was connected and just a whole bunch of typical stuff that you would expect to find in a disk drive of the day we got these switches right here for reading the um, reading whether or not a disk is inserted and reading whether or not it's right protected got another switch over here that's the eject switch got a couple of Japanese processors here dated from 1999 finally there's the motor let's see if we can pry this thing up it's very typical construction in here got the, the three phase stator coils in there and uh, just DC just a magnet on the rotor part standard brushless DC motor construction oops well there we go they're both still attached to each other but at least I got this this bottom part taken off of it and you can see all the coils in there not sure why this one's a little different it's actually 13 poles there's these 12 poles with the the clear coated enamel and then there's this 13th pole with the, the red colored enamel and much thinner wire as well not sure what that's all about but might have something to do with getting the motor started in the right direction or the right speed maybe that's a that might be a sensor coil to actually regulate the speed of the motor not entirely sure and there you have it just a couple more springs and stuff on here and that's it for the teardown of this emation super disk drive little piece of late 90s technology that was kind of obscure again i never heard even heard of this thing until just a couple of years ago when somebody gave this to me so i learned a lot while tearing this down if you learned something then please give this video a thumbs up see you later and just for the heck of it just because i can i got that little DC motor drive thing here with a little LED and uh, 100 ohm resistor both of which came off of the circuit board right here and I'm going to hook it up and see if it actually works there we go using that little switch inside there to make a rather noisy and archaic LED flasher awesome And one more goodie that came out of this teardown, I managed to separate the uh, stator coil from the, the rotor magnet and punched the, the center shaft up a little bit. And then you have yourself a nice little refrigerator magnet. And as a bonus, you can even take apart the floppy disk and stick that on there. There you go. Complete old school computer vintage themed refrigerator magnet. Very nice.